Leonard Ravenhill was a great man of God and his book about his life is called In the Light of Eternity, The Life of Leonard Ravenhill. It has been said of him that he wasn't so popular because he didn't promote himself anywhere. He was a man of deep prayer, serious about God, the church, and the church's destiny. We don't want to miss what God is doing in the world. And as American Christians, it seems like sometimes we become very self-focused because of the blessing that we have. Well, listen, Jesus even said it's easier to go through a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a man to enter the kingdom of God. We're going to talk about this and so much more, including what Francis Chan has to say about the example that is set in the globe, as a global Christian. Check it out. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. Talking about in this part of the program about a, a, a prophet by the name of Leonard Ravenhill. If you haven't got his book, it's in light of eternity. Mm. And I love what he has on his tombstone. He has on his tombstone. This is, I would love, I, presently, I think that's what I'd like to have. Is um is what you're living for hmm. worth Christ dying for? Yeah, is that powerful? Yes. Yeah, that wow. means every time somebody comes by your grave, you're still preaching the gospel. That's your right. whole reward still hasn't come in yet. That's Isn't good. that cool? Yeah, yeah. That is so cool. And uh, so, uh, um, Charles Sepiel's reading reading this book, and uh, I got I, it's, a, it's a story about his life and his journey. I thought was pretty interesting. Um. But uh, there's one particular article in there, and this man, um, explain some of his impact, John, as I'm looking this up. This is a tremendous man of God gift to the church at large. This was a prophet who spoke incredible truth. This is a man of deep prayer, um, and it was very serious about God and the church and the church's destiny. And uh, this man is, is, was, is, is from London. And I can remember some really amazing stories. In fact, it's interesting, interesting that the title of the book is called In Light of Eternity because one of his famous quotes is to stamp eternity on your mind, on your forehead, and to, to live with it with that perspective. But he's uh, from London, and even from an uh, early age in his life, when he was a young man, they would uh, him and his friends would just go you know, across, uh, across the countryside and just preach these revivals in tents. Right. They'd sleep in... Well, I have that right here. So I was going to talk about that. There, this is the this particular uh, newspaper that was writing an article on them in 1925. This uh, man by the name of Samuel Chadwick, during a period, during a particular period of time, he just had this. He saw this. Believe it or not, this is what, this is what it says. Um, he uh, began to ponder over the spiritual conditions of the world. All around, there were signs of moral collapse and economic failure. Wow. It's like it's like hey. This is like 1925. And, uh, but uh, worse still was the neglect of religion, the Sabbath, and the church. And so he began to, he had this vision of getting together a whole bunch of young guys and, and leading the Lord, training them up and launching them out. And this paper writes about him. That's what I wanted to be able to share about the teams. You continue talking, try to talk about this, that he would send them out. He says, this paper writes, it says, they, this is his vision. He would send forth a band of young men full of faith in the Holy Ghost to preach Christ to the multitudes unreached and unsought by the church, uh, and they will receive no salary. This mm. is important because if you want to reach a people, the last place you got to go to, you, you need to go to, is the people who think they already have God already. Yeah. Because they're going to be the most difficult folks to, to mm. reach because they, they don't understand, the Pharisees did not understand that, that you don't have God yet. Yeah, they're you know? blind. They're yeah. blind. And so he sent him out the street, and then he sent him out with no salary. Well, that would really, we're not talking lettuce here, Steve Hill said. He said, they will go as they are led, in other words, led by the Spirit, and they will live by faith. No collections will be taken. No subscriptions, which I guess partnerships on an mm -hmm. annual basis, will be solicited. No favors begged, but they will um, tramp, which is camp, from place to place, preaching and uh, testifying and singing in the streets, marketplaces and village. Uh, 
green pastures and beaches, depending upon where they're going to be at. And this was his vision to be able to send them out. And so Ravenhill was one of those teams that Mm -hmm. was going to go out. And this was his vision. The paper was writing about it. And they would just show up. They go about 30 miles a day. And they would just go. Because when I would hear about Ravenhill, I didn't understand the original and how, mm-hmm. how it happened. I thought he just got this call and he went. But really, Chadwick got this vision of that the only way we're going to be able to change things is to train and launch. We're going to have to train you know, uh, groups up and launch them out and just uh, have them infiltrate society to begin to share the love of God and win folks to the Lord. And they were winning. They had a song that they would sing. It was something about almost like the millionaire down to the poorest person. They're winning them all to the Lord. And, and but think about it. In that day, 1925, hmm. you know, not having, I mean, there was no holiday inns. There were, besides, right. there's no collections. And so they have a picture of them sitting on the side of the street in the bushes, you know, eating something and, mm-hmm. and as happy as they can be. Yeah. Slept in tents. Yes. And just, just wanted to do the, the you know, God's will, you right, know, reach right. souls. But this is an awesome man. I, I, I've actually, there's recordings of him, and, and I have actually cassette tapes of his messages, and they're so just filled with fire and conviction right. and passion. But this man was also an incredibly humble man. He was not about any kind of self-promotion at all. In fact, he was very good friends with A.W. Tozer, another just amazing man of God, and uh, they were they were very good friends. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've heard it said that, um, one of the reasons why uh, L- Leonard Ravenhill is not as popular as A.W. Tozer are, are well known is because he just never promoted himself at all. Mm-hmm. But this man was spiritual father to Steve Hill. He's spoken to the lives of Dr. Brown, Michael Brown. Christ for the Nations. Christ for the Nations. Mm-hmm. In fact, I believe even Keith Green, um, he's spoken to Keith Green's life, oh, wow. uh, worship leader who who passed and went, and went to be with the Lord in, in yes. the 70s or in the Jesus movement, I believe. Yeah, and he did. Just absolutely I awesome. I got pictures of him in this book with him sitting with Keith. Yeah, the uh-huh. impact the impact of, of, of his life is just amazing. I've heard stories of, of men that had to um, preach in the same conference. Uh, other men of God said, I don't even want to preach when Leonard River Hills. I don't even want to be there because this he was just very serious about holiness. Mm. Holiness, holiness, holiness. And that was a, his main message, holiness and repentance. In fact, he's one of... Um, He's well known for a book called um, "Why Revival Terries," and uh, again, you know about repentance in America, repentance around the world. A man of prayer. His son David Ravenhill uh, was an instructor here uh, in, in in the Gulf Coast area for a uh, for school of ministry, Brownsville Brown School of Ministry, and has just continued his father's legacy. But just a, a amazing, amazing. What I thought was pretty around. interesting in, in reading parts of his book was that Charles Stanley in the 70s, I believe it was the 70s, he writes about how there was a powerful move taking place at Charles Stanley's church and in Atlanta. And he was preaching, and and um, and Charles had told him basically everything is good in the congregation, everything's fine. And he didn't preach, he didn't know if he had anything left to preach. And, uh, and all of a sudden, he just felt like the Lord led him to preach on. Um, prodigals and he's thinking oh my goodness charles is not going to like this mm-hmm. you know because there's obviously you know, there's prodigals here so he spoke on prodigal fathers and when he finished talking about prodigal fathers prodigal you know that left the lord man the altar is just flooded flooded with fathers just weeping and crying and then after praying for them they went back and they prayed for prodigal children mm-hmm. and then the children mm-hmm. came wow. and then they told him at that point this is what's written about his book He's going to go out the back or something in the church, and Charles, they tell him, the church tells him, don't go out back because that particular building uh, back there is filled with homosexuals, is what he said. And Leonard says, you know, what are you talking about? Right. And so the next thing you know, the, the whole um, altar is filled with all these folks that were in the homosexual lifestyle and getting saved. And so Charles comes up and says, um, I mean, uh, Leonard tells Charles, you pray for these guys. And he started to pray for him. And he said, I can't pray for him because the only thing I ever prayed to this point was that they would actually leave the city. Oh, wow. Mm. And, and Leonard Ravenhill's heart, he loved people. He loved everybody. And he wanted, he knew that anybody could be saved if they come to the Lord. Mm. And of course, he, he was broken based on what he's write, writing about this book, that mm. he shouldn't have felt that way. And you realize all this time, I should have been loving on these people instead of rejecting them and just you know i'm saying that type of thing i thought man that's just so powerful because everybody's created in the image and the likeness of god god loves us i mean he loves us he he has a plan for your life and there's nothing 
nothing too dark or too wrong that God cannot forgive us and cleanse us. I thought it was pretty powerful, yeah. a pretty powerful thing. And that, you know, some people, you know, preach their preferences and pray out their, their preferences versus like God wants every man to be saved. Mm -hmm. He loves you. God's got a plan for your life. And if you want to find out more, we'll make it available access to it in light of his integrity. It's the biography of uh, Leonard Ravenhill. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfnkb.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.